Expectations in relationships. That's the conversation we're going to have here today on Relationship Thursday. How you guys doing? This is Ron Simplified Myers, author of the book, The Relationship Success Handbook, Get Rid of Your Problems, Not Your Partner. Now, we want to talk about this expectation, but before I get into other deeper into the relationship expectations, let's start with the initial expectations, which is the dating stage, that first date. Um, Because I remember being on a podcast one time, a guest on someone's show, and we talked about this, and a young lady had called in on the show, and she asked the question, isn't it a guy's job to impress you on the first date? And my response was, why does he need to impress you? It's not his job. His job is to be himself, whoever that is. And if you're impressed, then we could talk about moving forward. And so what I was getting her to understand is this is the way, the reason that you hear about people sending the fake representative, in other words, on the first date, the person is not themselves. They're acting like who they think you want them to be. That's the fake representative. And then after the first date or the first couple of dates, the real them starts to come out. Well, I said, why do you think you get the fake representative? Because you have these high expectations. You're expecting, you notice, you're expecting a person to act a certain way and therefore they know that. And so we're starting the relationship off with people playing games. Like I told her, you want him to be a self, however that is. If he's a jerk, just be a jerk. There are people that really, um, I, don't under, I don't get it personally, but they enjoy hanging out with jerks. And so if she's attracted to that, cool. And vice versa, I'm not here to say good, bad, right, or wrong. It, you guys know I always talk about find out what works for you. Um, if a person's like that, rude, disrespectful, not, I, I'm, I'm not hanging out with you, even as a friend, let alone anything else. So, but you have to decide that. So, on this first date, and ladies, um, and this is what I was sharing also. On a first date, when you put these high expectations on a guy. You're expecting him to take you to a nice dinner. I mean, like top of the line dinner, basically treat you like a queen. As far as I'm talking about from a money perspective, he should treat you that way regardless, just because he's in your presence. I think you should treat, whether you're in a date with someone or not, you, you need to give people that respect. That's just the way I believe. But I'm saying in terms of the, the, the money he's going to put out, you're expecting this him to take you to the nice restaurant and, and basically show you an extravagant time. And then you're offended at night when he wants you to show him an extravagant time. Now I know, don't, don't get offended by what I just said. I am not saying you owe him because he gave you that kind of night. What I'm saying is if you have an expectation for him, you guys follow. That's the key word I'm talking about here. If that's the expectations that you're putting out, that you're expecting from him, you can't be offended when he wants something that in return at night. It's that simple. My thing is the purpose in that first date. As far as you guys know, everything I talk about. What is a date? A date is anytime you set an appointment with somebody and you guys make it happen. That's a date. It doesn't have to be intimate. It doesn't have to be uh, someone you're thinking of, you know, being in a relationship or anything. If I go and have dinner with my mom or my sister or whatever, that's a date. We've made this stuff very, you know, like, that's what I keep saying. We go out on dates and we're treating everybody as if they're an interview for a husband or wife. Folks, stop. You're stressing yourself out. That's too much work. Go out and enjoy this journey we call life. Just relax. And so for me, and again, that's even you guys that are that are panicking about it. Well, I ain't got time. Folks, you guys have seen my other videos. You know I'm saying you're going to put the time out anyway. But the key to if you quote unquote want to save time 
is get your stuff together first. It's amazing how many people are interviewing people and, and expecting this person to have all their stuff together when you messed up. It's just amazing to me. Get you together first. That's why, again, I keep saying get rid of your problem. When you get you together, it becomes very, it's simpler, it's easier to figure out people quicker. Why? Because you're not trying to really figure people out. You just know the direction in which you're headed and you're trying to see if they're headed in the same direction. Does that make sense? I'm not trying to figure out how all women think. I don't care. That's too much work. I'm not trying to figure out how guys think. That's too much work. I'm trying to figure out where is Ron trying to go? What is he trying to get out of life? What's the next step in his journey? And I'm trying to find someone who's headed in that direction and wants to go with me. You guys follow me? All this other stuff, we're making this stuff way, 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 way too complicated. Figure out what it is you want. Get you together. And then all the rest of this becomes a lot simpler. Because now when I'm, when I'm communicating with you, when I go out with you, I'm just going out to have a good time. But I can pick up on stuff just being a human being. I can pick up. You know, just like I said, if, if you're sitting there and they're very rude to the waiter, wait, what? Folks, that's, that's who they are. You know, that's not saying people can't change. But that's, that's who they are at this point. You're going to get a taste of that if you're in a relationship with them. It's that simple. You know what I mean? If, if they let doors close in your face, okay, you know as a lady, you know, he's not, that's not saying he can't change, but at this point, he doesn't have the manners of, of how he should actually treat you or if you're okay with that, then that's cool too. But again, this is why I say get clear what you want and then if they're not following through, you have the choice at this point that if the stuff was minor, because you guys know I always talk about red flags, and deal breakers. If they're red flags and they're deal breakers, stop, put on the brakes, we're done. If they're things that maybe they weren't taught and you're okay with it because it's not major and you're willing to help them through that and they're willing to accept that in return and, and take the what you told them, then we can move forward. I saw... Uh, 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 thing on Facebook today, matter of fact, someone said, if you, rem what did it say? If you tell somebody something ab about how you feel and they don't change, then they don't respect you. That's not true because it depends on what you're asking them to change because it's back to, like I said before, anything against your beliefs, your values, you shouldn't change. If it's something that you need to change because it would help you actually become a better person, I'm with you. But just because it makes you feel a certain way, I shouldn't automatically change. And that means I, does, I don't respect you because I didn't change. Because to change and it's against what I believe, it's a disrespect to myself. You guys follow? I ha you have to be able, and that's what communication, why you guys hear me talking about why communication is so important. Because we have to figure out if what you're talking about where you want me to change, if that's something that's against my morals and belief. And if not, why am I not wanting to change? And then why do you want me to change? Are you trying to create me to be? Because you guys know, again, I talk about that. When a person is trying to change you, what they're telling you is, I don't like you. So see, that throws that whole conversation off to begin with. It says, if you tell a person how you feel about something they're not willing to change. Well, first off, you're trying to change people. Remember what I told you? This is not your job to change people. Your job is to figure out where you're headed and see if they're headed. You guys, see if they're headed in the same direction. It's not your job to change people. And you can't say they don't respect you because they're not willing to change. You know when a person doesn't respect you because they don't respect you. But don't tie the two together. They're not the same. Just because I'm not willing to change, I can have the utmost respect to you, for, you, for you. I'm just not changing because what you want me to change to is something that's against something I believe in and something I'm not willing to change. It's that simple. So again, let's quit trying to make things be what we want them to be. And that's why people have relationship conflicts. So hopefully we got that clear. On that first date expectations, quit interviewing people, go out, have some fun. 
and then we'll see where that heads. And again, it's not his job to impress you on the first date. And his job is to be himself on the first date. And we can decide if this is going to go into multiple called dating because we continue to do it more and more often. Because like I said, some people will just be good friends if you're a person that's okay with actually having friends. We act like we're in a society that either I'm in a, in a relationship with you, uh, an intimate relationship with you, or nothing. Wow. We're, we're, we're selling ourselves short and we're cutting ourselves out of a lot of enjoyments in life because that's the kind of philosophy that's been passed out out there. Again, you guys, uh, if you haven't heard me talk about it, I have the conversation where I talk about can men and women be friends. Of course they can. And um, I'm not going to get into that here, but of course they can. Um, the people that say they can't is because they can't be trusted. But that doesn't, but quit putting that label. You guys know I, I keep saying, quit putting your personal beliefs and values on everybody else. Just because you can't be trusted. Quit saying everybody fits that category because that's where that stuff comes from when people go, 90% of men think this way. No, that's the way you think. And you're trying to justify your thought process by coming up with the 90%. Nobody has ever done a survey on any of this stuff. Uh, I, cause I can tell you now, I have never done a uh, survey, but I keep hearing all these 90% of how men think about this, 87% of this. I don't know where they put me because I ain't never been interviewed or, or, or did a survey on any of this stuff. It's all made up. People just took a small segment of people they interviewed, and you guys have heard me say in the past. What age group were they? What culture were they from? What country were they from? What were the belief that you see it? There's too many things that come into play for you to ever be accurate on those kind of conversations. That's why I keep telling you guys there is no way that men are, and there is no way that women are, because there's too many things that come into play for every single individual for us to start making blanket conversations. But anyway, I got sidetracked there. But the bottom line is expectations. Watch that you're putting those on people. The expectation that I would say if you're going to go out on the first date is expect to enjoy the timeout. That's it. I'm just here to enjoy the moment and we'll see where this heads from here. Because you guys have heard me say before, the moment I feel you're interviewing me, we're done. It's that simple. We're done. Because I'm not here to interview. I am here to enjoy the journey. And so we can figure that stuff out as we talk and we get to know each other. If you guys, again, are clear where you're headed, you'll pick up those keys just by having a regular human being conversation, not by interviewing, just a regular let's have fun and enjoy each other conversation. You can figure out those key components. Are they crossing the red flags and the deal breakers? And if they're not doing that, all that other stuff you can work through. If you're looking for that person that you could check off the list and they fit everything and they're already there, good luck. Um, chances of it happening actually happening are probably very slim. So now, once you're in a relationship, same thing. Expectations. Throughout the process, you should be paying attention because this is what happens with people. They get in relationships. I'm having fun. But there's things I want to know. And then I get afraid to rock the boat because I'm having fun. Now, this goes back to how you feel about yourself, which is the you got. That's the first thing I talk about. I, even in my book, the first chapters on self-love. Just because I'm enjoying being with you doesn't mean I'm willing to put up with anything just to be there. I'm not going to sell me short because I love me too much to do that. And by that, what I'm saying is uh, an example would be, uh, and I hear this more from ladies, that they're in a relationship where it's going good. The guy's doing everything that you would expect from a boyfriend, but he doesn't want to give you the tag of girlfriend. Matter of fact, I was just talking to a relative uh, about this in... Uh, and I was asking her, I said, how you get a, how you get a boyfriend anyway during pandemic? You know, because she don't have, she's not really leaving the house. And it's and of course it's someone she she said, Oh, I've known him for like eight years. So, okay, that's understandable. So this is someone she's already you guys see how that works? That's cool. Because that's what I told her. I said, see, that's someone you already built a relationship with. You guys already pretty much know the deal breakers and the red flags and stuff. Hopefully during those eight years, you guys have already figured that stuff out. Because Again, the, the, the red flags are usually, I want to get married, do you. I want kids, do you. Those kind of things, you know what I mean? The, where those things, we, we get, you need to get those clear. Um, even the money, 
you know, which I, you know me, I don't tell people that should be at the top of the list, which it never is. People will use that as a justification, but that's not the reason people get divorced. I told you I've been through that and, and, I've, and I've shared that in other videos. That's what the world teaches you, but it's not, it's a myth. It's not the reason people get divorced. Um, it's, it may be a contributing factor in terms of why they started fighting inside of their relationship. But if you got two people on the same squad, they will work together to overcome the money issue. You guys follow? That's why I said money is not the reason. Um, so, but anyway, I was, I was saying with the person, you know, that that was good because she's already put in the time, the friendship to get to know the person. So she already knows. She's on past the 90 days. Everybody says about 90 days. Well, she, she, it's been eight years. Now I know some people, but they weren't intimate. It's been eight years. You can justify whatever you want to. Um, you don't decide, like I told you, the 90 days, and most people when they're talking about it, they're talking about from a sexual perspective. Again, the most valuable person, place, or thing you will ever have is you. And to put that on a calendar, that's an insult, and you should take it that way. Now, if you decide to go before 90 days, make sure it's something because you want to do, not because the expectation from the other person. If you want to wait past 90 days, six months, a year, that's your expectation. That's where it should stay. If they're not willing to wait the six months or a year, they're not the one. Folks, this is, this is why I'm saying that using that analogy we just said earlier about changing. If the person is telling you, well, this is how I feel, dealing with that same example, I feel you don't care because you're not willing to go to bed with me. So I should change. I should go to bed with you because that's the way you feel. That's why I said just that doesn't mean a person disrespects you because they don't want to go to bed with you. You guys follow? Because I'm just using that example that we talked about earlier. Talking about if you're not willing to change, it means you don't respect. That's not true. What you're asking me to do is pretty much a disrespect to my belief in values because you're telling me to go against what I believe to quote unquote, make you happy, follow? So we have to be careful, again, how we link those things together and say this is what it means. So for me, again, your body's the most valuable thing you have, you don't put it on a calendar, get to know a person, then you guys can decide. But again, expectations, as you're going through the relationship, you should have those. And in that, and what we're talking about here, as far as a commitment, that guy that, that uh, that you want to be in a relationship, but he hasn't put in the label, you need to get the label. Again, I've talked about that, where young ladies are afraid to ask for the label because they're afraid he's going to walk. Okay. And if he walks, again, back to what I said before, how do you feel about yourself? This is going to always come back to the same conversation. Everything I teach always comes back to the same thing. How do you feel about you? I, I have a right to have expectations as you have a right to have expectations inside of your relationship. If I don't meet those expectations, why are we, why are we contributing? I mean, continue in this relationship especially if I'm not willing to change to adapt to those expectations. Again, like I told you, just because I'm at this point not lining up with everything that you're looking for, but as I get to know you, you know, you guys know I used the example of me and Terry Long, you know, she's always one of those, she like, like to hold hands and, and all that. And I was just one of those that I'm just like, I just want to walk. I don't want to be holding hands and stuff. That's not against my beliefs and my value, but that was an expectation of hers is that that was a love language for her. That was to show you cared and stuff. And so I know that's how she felt. Back to the same conversation. That's how she felt. But for me, this was not a crossing the line. And so in this particular instance, yes, that's something that I should be willing to change and work on. And that's why I said in this case, I can understand that comment. Because something like that, we're not going against my values and beliefs. So you should be able to expect that in the relationship. That doesn't mean I disrespect you. Again, it does. Quit trying to say what it means. But you have the right to have the expectation. Like in her case is that if we're together, you know how I feel. You know I like to caress. You know I like to hug. You know I like to hold hands. That's an expectation she has that she wants from her men. 
I should be willing to do that because we're not going against morals and values and beliefs on this. This is just my own little whatever uh, phobia, <laughs> whatever it is that I need to deal with. You guys got me? And so if I'm not willing to do that, again, it's not a disrespect to her unless she wants to take it that way. For whatever reason, I have a choice. I'm going to address that. And do this because I do want to be in a relationship with her and I understand it's an expectation that she has. Or for whatever my reason is, I don't want to switch. And like I said, it ain't, it's not necessarily out of disrespect. It's just whatever your little, uh, you have a decision on whether you want to address your issue because that's what it is. Again, it's not a disrespect to you. It's my personal issue that I have decided not to address. Again, quit taking stuff personal. And that's what that's all about. That co whole conversation about if, if you don't change and you know how I feel, then it means you disrespect. No, that's you taking on. That's what it means because you're taking it personal. But you do have the right to expectations. And you should put those expectations out there. If the person is willing to reach those expectations, we can move forward. If they're not willing to reach those expectations, why are you settling? If that guy, you want to be in a relationship and he doesn't want to put a tag on him, you need to make it clear. I can't continue to, because right now I'm committed to just you. I know you're not, for whatever reason, you don't want to put the tag, but I'm dating just you and this is what I want. I want to be in a relationship with you. Tell me what's going on. Because if he's not, you guys follow what I'm saying? you're giving up the possibility of finding the right guy for you for this person who doesn't want to commit to you. You follow? You have to be willing to say, this is what I'm looking for. Again, communication is key. You got to be willing to say, this is what I'm looking for. You can go with me or not. And again, if you love you enough, I'm willing to say, it may hurt, folks. I'm not saying it's, it ain't going to hurt. It might be painful because that relationship is so beautiful. But there's a reason that they don't want to give you the label. Think about it. There's a reason they don't want to give you the label. They don't want to commit. Why? Not necessarily your job to figure out why. That's up to you if you want to go through and be an investigator. But to me, it doesn't really matter. The bottom line, all you need to know is they don't want to commit. Now you get to decide, you know what? Do I want to go out and date other people while I'm dating him or her since they don't want to commit? Or if I my expectations is I want to be in a committed relationship, either they're in or they're out. Folks, I know that could be strong. I know that could be tough. I know, you know, we get our hearts involved. But you guys know, you got to love you enough to be able to make those tough decisions, even if it's going to be painful today. It's better to do it today and, and then have that conversation, that healing process to get through it and prepare for the next, you know, relationship than it is to stay here in this relationship for two to three years, hoping that he or she will commit and then turn around and find out they're with someone else. Folks, that's when it's really harmful. And that's when people get real scars. And that's when people take that stuff into other relationships. And then you're going to go back to the whole title of this book, of my book again, which is now you're going to have to go through the process I told you again, which is get rid of your problems before you go into the next relationship. So as you guys know, it ain't right. It ain't wrong. It is my opinion. Now, for those of you who uh, we talk on Monday, uh, Self Love Monday, I look forward to talking to you then. For those of you on the relationship, I look forward to talking to you on uh, Relationship Thursday, which is next Thursday. Uh, you guys take the time to go over to ronsbusinesscard.com. Again, again, Ron. <laughs> again, ronsbusinesscard.com. It gives you access to everything I'm into, my books, my podcasts, everything that I'm doing. It's all right there in one spot. That's why I came up with it because 
I was I was overwhelmed with myself myself. Like, what link do I give people? And it's like, you know what? Let's let's solve this issue. One link, it covers it all. And as you guys know, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. And again, set your expectations. You should have those in every area of your life. Because if you don't, then people will treat you anyway. And that cannot be acceptable. I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.